Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Redmi K20 Pro and we are talking about the 24 hour review of Android 12 Beta 5 which is ported to this wonderful device. I've been using it since yesterday as my secondary device. The primary of course has been Mi 11X which is also running Android 12 Beta 5 and the experience has been amazing. This is by far the most significant release of Android versions that I've seen from Google because before it is released in the final state, it is running really, really well and smooth on other devices as well. Now, in today's video, we will talk about the initial impressions and the battery life, the charging, what my experience has been. At the same time, from a testers group, a big thanks to Sanat who has tested things for me. We will talk about his feedback as well. But before we get into all of that, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. In the description of each video, you will find a link to our Telegram community where you have more than a thousand like-minded people chatting with each other. So join us there. Last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kailash. Let's get going. All right, so let's actually talk about what's new. Android 12 Beta 5 based on Pixel 5 by Team Evelyn. So big shout out to you guys. They're doing an amazing job for this device. Fixed L1, fixed dual SIM again, read notes, fixed slow charging, fixed battery drain, added ZRAM right back fixed USB ADB issues, switched to dark animation. Now it does require Android 11 firmware and to fix not being able to switch data between two SIMs, you have to do this. FOD will be provided as a flashable add-on. I've already installed it. Encryption is not supported and is disabled by default. Now Android 12 Beta 5, something really, really significant, something really, really good because my experience on the Mi 11X with this particular port has been really good, but this has been a port by a different team. So let's see what we have here. First of all, usual stuff. The moment you boot into Android 12 Beta 5, you have a clean user interface. This is the wallpaper that I have installed. The link is mentioned in the description. To the left, you have Google Feed, which even on a 60 Hertz display is working as expected. It is just surprising that we have Google Pixel 6 Pro News as well. I'm really looking forward to that device with their custom processors. From the top to bottom, you do have your quick tiles or notification tiles, which work like a charm. And you do have your power menu over here. You have your settings shortcut and you can go ahead and edit it. And you have a ton of customization here as well. You do have your built-in screen recorder, which works absolutely fine. So let's go here and it does allow you to use inbuilt audio as well. So device audio and microphone, let's click on start. You get a timer over here and then it starts recording. Now let's see if it is stuttering or not. I don't see any stutters or any performance degradation, which is a really, really good sign because it is working absolutely okay. Let's go ahead and stop the screen recording here. Okay. As you can see, it has audio being recorded and it is really, really smooth as far as the recording is concerned. Now, when I said that you have additional options, you do have things like mic access, camera access, device controls, all these things can be enabled and they work just fine. If you press and hold over here, you have home settings in which you can customize some things, not everything, basically a pixel launcher. Moving on, you do have your new style of widgets. Very, very smooth, very, very fluid here as well. At the same time, if you go to wallpaper and style, you select change wallpaper and say you select another wallpaper, tick mark, home and lock screen, the whole accent will change once again. Let's go ahead and select another wallpaper. There you go. Now, as you can see over here, it is working absolutely fine. Now you did see the green colored mic icon coming up. That is something really, really neat. Just like iOS, it will show you that some app or which app is using your mic or camera or anything else. So from a privacy standpoint, it is really, really good. You do have your app drawer. Now look at this animation. This is a pill shaped one. Now, if you scroll, it becomes rectangle. And if you come down, it becomes pilled again. Over here, you have option of always show keyboard. You can go ahead and hide that as well. And once again, you have your preferences over here. So the launcher is pretty decent, pretty rock solid, working great as expected. 
Now, as far as the camera is concerned, this particular ROM doesn't ship with the camera application. So you're going to have to go ahead and install Gcam or a camera of your choice from the Play Store. Moving on, let's go to settings over here and let's go to about phone. Let's quickly go to Android 12 and you do see that it comes with the Soviet star kernel, which means performance should be pretty decent. September security patch and this is your Android 12 Easter egg. There you go working like a boss now apart from this you do get all your android 12 goodies which have detailed in the mi 11x video but i'll quickly run you through them network and internet internet is working absolutely fine so you do have your additional wi-fi options over here you can disconnect you can share the wi-fi and you can see the network usage detect automatically or treat as unmetered because we are on an unlimited Wi-Fi connection, 5 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, everything working absolutely fine. Moving on, you have SIM cards, voice over Wi-Fi is working absolutely okay, hotspot is working, I've not had any issues there. Now, as far as the Bluetooth is concerned, let's quickly go ahead and try to connect Bluetooth devices. So these are my noise shorts XO earbuds. Let's see if it connects to them because the Mi 11X connected just fine and I was able to listen to music and stream music. Can't communicate to shorts XO. That's because my Mi 11X is connected to it. So let's go ahead and disconnect Bluetooth on this one. Now let's try to connect now. Okay, here we go. As you can see, connected. Let's go to YouTube and let's quickly look for NCS so we can play some music. Great. So the Bluetooth connectivity is working great. So that's another neat addition. Now, Bluetooth connectivity was an issue in some of the previous builds, but now for the 11X and for the K20 Pro, it is working absolutely fine. Moving on under connected devices, you don't really have much, so no problems there. You do have your apps section where you can set the default apps. You have, you have assistant settings as well. Under notifications, you have bubbles. Remember, it is not supported by WhatsApp yet. But if you go over here, you have notification history, which you can go ahead and enable. And if you've missed a notification or an important notification, you can go ahead and look at the notification history, which is really, really useful. Now we talk about an important aspect that is battery life. At the same time, we will also talk about charging. So let's talk about charging first. Now, as you can see over here, the charging for me has been pretty, pretty decent. Like it's not ultra fast charging. It's a little slower than other custom ROMs, but as far as the battery life is concerned, it is pretty decent. You can easily go ahead and use it for a day. If you're a heavy user, maybe it not, it'll not last you for an entire day. But let me also give you the review of my, one of my elite testers for phone ops. So let's go here and you remember, you can sign up to be an elite tester as well to be a part of this group wherein we do a lot of fun over here. We do test different ROMs every single day. There are benchmarks and this is basically an exclusive group. So let's see what battery life he got over here. So in the last 24 hours, he's used Netflix for one hour and 19 minutes. And as you can see over here, he's having pretty decent battery life. Now these are his reviews over here phone heats to 35 degrees on just netflix that is not great fod is already pressed when you double tap on the screen to wake decent battery life overall stable no jitters notification tiles like wi-fi and data take time to switch on and off fluid smooth decent fod recognition now let me talk about the fod over here you have to first flash the rom and then you have to flash the fod fix at the same time you have to have this app which needs root access which is fod helper I'll talk about this in a while, but let me show you the FOD first. There you go. Okay. So even with the screen off in decent lightning, FOD is working. And let's go ahead and talk about this particular app. Now, first of all, this needs root access. These are the level of brightnesses, right? And if you can see over here, yeah, 
that is the brightness it will give for a couple of seconds while you try to unlock right white green there you go so let's see over here real quick now this is another thing which is slightly buggy if you see this happening you just have to do this even if you don't unlock it will go away then you can go ahead and do this again as you can see so the Android 12 animation and the FOD and everything else is working as expected. It's just that you need to give it root access and then FOD should not be a problem. And the battery life and charging are pretty decent. It's just that the phone heats up a little bit while going through Netflix or you know playing online media, which is usually not the case with this particular device. Now, apart from this, beyond battery life, you do have sound and vibration wherein you have all the Android 12 features working absolutely fine, including screen attention. So nothing to worry there. And we did speak about wallpaper styles over there. You do have your app grids, which you can go ahead and customize. You can enable dark themes and you can select themed icons. It is still in beta because it doesn't work with third party applications, but with the built-in applications, it works absolutely fine. The dual SIM for me is working as expected. I did not had the need to go ahead and switch data between the two SIM cards. If you do have an issue, there is a fix mentioned in the description. You can go ahead and apply that. So, you know, all in all, this is a pretty smooth, pretty fluid ROM. You can definitely use it as a daily driver if you can get a camera application of your choice. Now we will talk about the benchmark numbers before we go ahead and end this 24 hour review. So I was not able to te test Antutu because it was giving me errors, but let's have a look at the CPU throttle test first. All right, now the CPU throttle to 70% of its max performance and the average score was 152. 498 now the throttling test was not that great it's not a good test let's go ahead and have a look at geekbench over here 742 single core 2509 multi-core and banking applications without root i did not have any issues and with root you know how to go ahead and fix it we've made videos on that the device is certified on the play store but remember this device is not encrypted so you will be able to use banking applications wideband l1 should be working just fine the battery life is decent the charging speeds are okay all in all android 12 beta 5 is moving in the right direction it is not as amazingly fluid or better as it is on the 11x but this is definitely on par with other custom roms and you can definitely use it as a daily driver remember i am going to do a gaming review on the Pixel Experience on the X3 Pro, on the Android 12 on K20 Pro and Android 12 on the Mi 11X. It'll soon be out tomorrow or day after. Stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.